I've been trying to figure out what makes people succeed and others don't. And I used to think it was how well they did in school and their intelligence and their SATs and scores and everything. Yet there was a study that really was very disquieting to that way of thinking. And it dealt with a small college in upper state New York, which is typical of many, many small colleges in, in New England area in upper state New York, and it's called Hartwick College. And it dealt with students that were stem cell students, and stem cell deals with science, technology, and math. And it's generally seen as the most difficult courses to take. And so if you look at Hartwick, and you look at the way they divide it up in, in uh, the, the scores, that in Hartwick, at Hartwick, the top SAT average was 567. Okay, so that is what it was at Hartwick. Okay, and when you look at that as their SAT score, then that's their top. Okay, the, the, so this is the top one third. And if you look at the Harvard top, okay, in Harvard, the, it was 753. Now, that's a huge difference between 567 as a top third and, five, and 750. And the highest you can get is 800. So these guys are extremely bright. Which, this is the top third. Now what I want you to do is look at Harvard's bottom third. This is their bottom third. And their scores were on average 5, 9, 1. So you can see the bottom third at Harvard actually had a higher average than the top third at Harvard. And yet what happened, as you'll see, is that over time, it isn't these scores that make a difference. It's where you graduate in the class. So if you graduated in the top third at Harvard or the top third at Harvard, you were very, very successful. You wrote many, many articles. They were quoted equally the amount of times. The people who live in this these domains, it's very interesting because 55% of the Harvard people graduated with that score, whereas at Harvard, it was just a little bit less. It was 53.4%. Now, what is this saying? Well, it's about the same. But this score is lower than the, low, is lower than the lowest average at Harvard, and yet they end up with basically the same graduation rate and the same basically persona in the public, and they write the same number of articles, they're quoted the same amount of time. So basically, the scores don't matter. It, what matters is where you graduate. If you graduate in the top third here or the top third at Harvard, what's interesting is that the next two levels down, the second third and the second to second third and the third third, they also produce about the same number of papers, but it was it didn't matter, so none of this mattered. So why can groups that are in the top third here, which would be in lower than the bottom third at Harvard, be able to produce this level of, of, of success out in the real world dealing in the STEM area? So, so I kept looking at it, and it doesn't make a lot of sense, not according if these things make any difference, and obviously, they don't because these turn out to be basically the same. So then what became very clear to me is what's really going on here has to do with where you graduate in the class. And I came up with the idea that this really has to do with self-concept. Self the implication there means that what you want to do is to put yourself in a cohort where you are in the top third. It doesn't matter if you go to Harvard and you have a 567, you're in the bottom third. You go to Harvard, you're in the top third. You want to go not to, even though this is most prestigious as Harvard, you don't want to go there because you're going to be in the bottom third and you're going to suffer from self concept comparing yourself to all the smart kids. Where here, you are the smart kids. 
And so this idea that once you get out of school, if you've graduated in the top third, your self-concept is going to be extremely high. And if you graduate in the bottom third, even if it's higher on the intellectual scores than the ones at Harvard, doesn't matter because you get basically the same as the bottom third at Harvard in terms of Harvard and Harvard are basically the same in a level of papers, a level of acknowledgement all the way down. And yet they start at 567 and Harvard bottom is 591. So it's just, it makes no sense. So, but what does it mean? It means that rather than going to a school where you can barely get into and just say you're lucky and you get into Harvard and you're in the bottom third, your chance of success once you graduate is very low. So what you want to do is go to a school where you're in the top third. So don't stress and don't try to get into the high performing schools because it's going to really hurt you when you get out. Go to a school where your scores are going to be in the top third. And so what I call this basically is being the big fish in the little pond. And so the bigger you are in the pond you're in, which is the cohort you're dealing with, the more likely you're going to succeed. And the strategy then is, is once you get very, very good at being the big fish in the little pond, you then jump ponds, where, but you only jump high enough so that you're still in the top third. You work hard again, and you jump another pond. And you just continue, but never try to get into anything where you are in the bottom part. And so it's, it's very disquieting to see that your rank and relationship to the group that you're with determines your future success in that particular field. And this happens to be a case that was done in STEM research, which is basically one of the most difficult ones. So all I'm suggesting now is before you push to get into the best school, push for a school where you're going to be in the top third and go there and get great grades, then jump through, uh, jump ponds if you want to get to a better school for graduate school. But don't try to do this and go to Harvard and get in the bottom half. You're going to fail and it won't feel good even though you're smarter based on the scores than the people at Harvard. It just doesn't work that way. I learned from Bucky a long time ago that the bigger the picture, the more accurate your prediction. There's nothing in a caterpillar, if you just study a caterpillar, will ever tell you about scenario butterfly. So my entire life, I'm working as much as I can to be a comprehensivist. That is interested in everything. So I can make better choices, better decisions, and have a better perspective. What can I do for you?